Have you ever noticed the choreography of your life? Shaking hands, nodding yes. How that choreography relates to machines? Opening a car door, answering your cell phone. Machines will soon be less passive. They will start interacting with you. Machines and robots will need a choreography of their own. And I think about this a lot because this is what my day looks like. Dancing with robots. I love dancing with robots. My imagination it goes crazy when I choreograph with them. It's like this giant mishmash of code, breath, metal, muscles, and a little bit of magic. So I wonder, who's really in charge? How does movement create relationship? We can actually learn a great deal by dancing with robots. I'm the artist in residence and a research technician at the Robotics Automation and Dance Lab at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. <laughs> I think about how robots move and the stories that we tell about them. I care about this because in 2014, my dad had a stroke, and while he was in recovery, he was surrounded by enormous machines. Heart monitors, breathing devices, fall detectors—all this stuff that was supposed to make him feel secure and healthy. But he was completely afraid. He said, "I felt like an experiment, not a human." I started to lose hope of ever getting better. And this really worries me because it's only a matter of time until people like my dad and others who may need care could be nursed by moving, speaking humanoid robots, kind of like the ones you just saw. Like my dad, 72 percent of Americans are worried about a future with robots. The numbers are not much better for countries like Japan, England, China, and the Netherlands. So I use my choreographic and dance skills for robotics research, designing positive ways for humans and robots to communicate. Today, I'm going to share three things I've learned by dancing with robots. Number one, fear not the only option when it comes to robots. This picture is from one of my first days in the Rad Lab. This Baxter robot is usually designed for manufacturing and research. Six feet high, super loud, very intimidating. Think of all the feelings someone like my dad would have about this robot: fear, confusion. I wanted to create a relationship that evoked upbeat emotions. So the first thing I did with this robot was walk up, close my eyes, and put my cheek against the screen. What does it feel like to do that? For me, it felt like I became more powerful, like I disarmed the robot, like I became more human. If I move with the robot in a particular way, it becomes an assistant, an aid, not a menace. I learned how to program the robot, which is something anyone can learn. It's hard to be afraid of something you control. Number two, performance is a very unique way to study human-robot interaction. That cheek moment I just described it made it into a piece that I created in collaboration with the Rad Lab called Time to Compile. Time to Compile was first performed in June 2017, and we're touring all over the place with this work. But it is not only live performance; it is scientific experiment. We measure how audiences perceive robots before and after the show, and then we invite everyone on stage to dance around with the robots themselves. The audience controls the machines, and they become empowered to think of themselves as robot masters instead of robot servants. This experience it stands in contrast to every other terrifying depiction of robots you've seen before, which there are many. We can change how you feel about robots through art. And finally, number three, a robot should be choreographed to interact with you, maybe like this. Choreography is everywhere. It's in the fact that you type like this instead of typing like this spacebar, <laughs> or that you say "Hey Siri" instead of "Hey Siri, call voicemail." There's an innate choreography to everyday life, and robots need that choreography too. Let's say that I'm a robot in your kitchen and I'm reaching for a cup off your kitchen counter like this, or like this. Which robot would you rather have in your house? <laughs> a friend asked me recently if robots show sympathy. 
It's a philosophical question, but it's also technical, and there might not be a definitive answer. But certainly, robots in our homes should move in ways that convey internal state or intentions. Move in ways that make us comfortable and supported. Things like this will open the door to people feeling empathized with, and this is so challenging because movement can be ambiguous. If I wave like this, like this, like this, those three are pretty easy. But what if I wave like this? Not so clear what I'm trying to say, right? Humans, we are capable of all these shifts, changes, and expressions. Today's robots are so limited in comparison. How movement translates into interaction and communication between humans and robots is an enormous, open question, one that needs to be explored by people with diverse viewpoints. This is just a sample of what we can learn by dancing with robots, and we use these lessons to design more positive human-robot interactions and more expressive robots. My dad made a full recovery after being sick, and a couple months ago, I sent him some of these videos. He watched them and goes, "Whoa, that robot! It looks sensitive, kind. You don't look scared at all. How do you control it?" Even my dad, like our audiences and like all of you, can have a feeling of empowerment when it comes to robots, which is why I firmly believe we should be optimistic. Robots have so much potential to improve our lives, but it's a collective effort, and robots are a reflection of the people who made them. And we need more people from different backgrounds to be a part of creating them and telling stories about them. The future becomes less equitable and inclusive when we're afraid. So let's have a dance. There's so much to discover. Thank you.
What was it like before? Before now. Did everyone want it to be like this? Did everyone know what to expect? How about you? They said they saw it coming. Do you see it coming? Yes. Is this where we are? Where are we right now?